Welcome back. I, uh, I, I'm going back to a brand that uh, I've thought about for a long time and have really followed ever since I started getting into shoes. Um, J. Fitzpatrick Footwear, which is owned by Justin Fitzpatrick, the shoe snob, from the shoe snob blog. And I, um, I took another chance on a pair of his shoes, um, really uh, for, for a couple reasons, and I'll walk you through it. But this is Wisconsin Shoe Guy, and this is another unboxing. Uh, and this time I'm giving loafers another try. Now, if you've watched the channel a, a while, you know that my loafer game is one of, well, struggle for me. Um, I have a pair of Venetian loafers uh, from Allen Edmonds that's made in India with kudu and is, um, uh, you know, was very comfy, just kind of something to replace uh, my Allbird loafers, right? Um, and then I have a, a pair that's really custom made to my feet from St. Crispin's, um, made from Kid Cat, uh, Kid Suede, which is, uh, which is very, very nice. Um, but uh, I still, even after all of that, um, have some, some fit issues. And um, so fit has always been a challenge for me with loafers. And um, uh, I commented on a, on, on a friend of mine um, who, who, who bought these loafers and um, Justin actually reached out and said, hey, I have a pair in your size, they're going on sale. Uh, if you wanna give it a try, now's the time. And uh, so I did. And um, you know, I've been really battling with uh, J. Fitzpatrick Footwear as being part of the top 40 um, in my head. There's so many brands out there and um, he's so good. Um, they really do deserve a place. And we'll talk a little bit about that um, as we look at the construction of the shoe. Uh, but now, let's get to it. I don't want to delay any longer. Uh, let's take a look at the unboxing. Now, he's got this drawer uh, box, which is, is very cool. Uh, one of the nicest things that he does compared to everybody else, and this is really the sign of, of a good shoe lover, um, is his bags. And so, let me talk about that for a second. He has like a really almost velvet smooth thing on the inside and a nice canvas on the outside. And he does this because in my mind, um, he was a shoe shiner. That was kind of his way of getting in touch with um, high-end men's shoes for a long time. And he uh, got to see <laughs> that shines got rubbed off of shoes. And you know, he'd spend an hour putting a good um, shine or more, well, putting a good shine on a pair of shoes. And um, he uh, got to see that get ruined in travel. And uh, so he uh, he put bags together that don't ruin the shine. So so here's the uh, here's the shoe. So just a gorgeous butterfly loafer. Now butterfly loafers are also obviously something I don't have. So that's part of it. Now it's a really really cool design. You can see how the strap is constructed. How it's got this great look. Of course, this is uh, you know I've been doing suede combination leather for a while. And this is a really nice muted pair. You know, from this angle, you don't really see it at all from far away. Um, it, it's intriguing and you don't really know why. And that's what's great about it. Now, uh, these are uh, pitched heels. Um, and that's something that he's done uh, relatively recently. When I had my first uh, couple, um, three pairs that I had from him, uh, this was not the way he did it. He does genuine leather heel stocks, um, which are which are really good. Um, a great nail pattern here. And you can see he has blind waist construction. I had him add the toe taps, which of course are uh, as close to perfect as I've ever had. And that's, you know, meticulous eye to detail. He makes sure that they're done right. Um, and his soles. Now his soles are not JR soles, but they do last. Um, you know, as I said, I've had three pairs and um, they're never, um, they're never like a quick wear or anything like that. His um, construction here, you can see the stitch density is really good. They do the edge fudging on the front, which is really, really nice. You can see the waist. Um, somebody takes the time to go in and smooth that waist down, carve it a little bit. Um, now it's not like a half where it's thick here and thin there. This is all one piece and they just, they go in and they carve it down to make it look a little nicer. On the inside, of course, that's harder. They do a good job. And this is a solid 270 welt. Um, 
One of the things you'll never see on his shoes are bad welts. Um, I've had really, really good experience with that. Um, I've done some MTOs uh, um, as well, and uh, you know, just really good. He's got suede on the inside of the heel to help with slip, especially um, important on a loafer. And then if you can see on the inside, he's got this insole here. Now this looks like a really large, thick um, uh, piece of, uh, of leather in the heel. And um, you know, they kind of call this a sock liner, but um, it's just the natural leather up front. Um, and uh, while I prefer one piece of leather all the way across, you hardly ever get that anymore. It's just, uh, it's just not done. So this is his butterfly loafer. And I just like it, I, I really do. Um, I think that the look is really, really good. I think the color um, kind of between a mahogany and a red um, is really good. The burgundy on the suede, really good. The suede feels really nice. You know, it's a top application. Um, Apron, nothing fancy, but uh, very, very sharp looking. And if you're, um, you know, if you're starting to get into um, shoes and you want something that's on the edge of different. Um, <laughs> so one of the things I like best about Justin Fitzpatrick's shoes is that they have this distinctive like, I care about the way I look, but I'm not gonna wear what everybody else wears look. And um, so th there's an individuality that really um, has driven his styling, which in my mind alone puts him in the top 40. Um, and the shoes are, are very well constructed. So um, that, uh, that also puts them there. Now he doesn't, I mean, he has a factory manufacturer's shoes for him, like a lot of brands do. And um, I think that they do really, really solid work. I've never bought anything from that factory, uh, nor from another brand that uses that factory, um, which is part of the criteria that I use for uh, my top 40 brands. So um, I think that uh, that would put him there. And again, he he designs his own shoes. So, you know, the lasts, the uh, um, the actual styling, the colors, the, the combinations, all of that stuff. Um, that's that's all him. So, you know, this butterfly loafer is not like other butterfly loafers exactly. Um, and that's part of what makes it great. So anyway, that's the first shoe. I'll take, and you notice how it came in plat. I mean, he's, you know, the packaging on this stuff is really, really solid. And, uh, you know, he didn't do anything special for me. Um, and I didn't get these for free. You know, this was just a regular published sale. And, um, you know, he just knows that I'm a fan of the design. And uh, he and I are friends, so he reached out to me and said, hey, these are on sale if you want them. You know, no pressure, no anything like that. And, you know, that's, that is what it is. And I jokingly responded to him and said, hey, uh, I'm the crazy guy that got toe plates on a pair of loafers. And he says, yeah, well, you know, and he has more shoes than I do. And he has toe plates on all of them uh, because that's how he wears his shoes. And uh, he wants them to last just like I do. So there you go. And I just, you look at these things and you really think, hey, that's different. And that's the point. So uh, it's not, uh, it's not gaudy, it's classy. And for, um, you know, I think these retail at 450 bucks. Um, in that price range, what you're getting with this is styling like you see in, you know, a, a Bemmer or a St. Crispin's or, or some of these high-end brands where you're dropping a thousand bucks, 13, 1400 bucks on a pair of shoes. And so while these are not inexpensive, the value you get for your money is you get your solid construction. Um, I would say as good, if not better, more likely better um, than anything else in the, in the price range. Um, and what you're getting is styling that you can't really touch um, unless you're double in the price range. And I think that that speaks volumes to the work that Justin does just in caretaking, designing, and managing his brand. Now he has a little storefront in, uh, I think it's in Soho, New York. And um, you know he's been doing really a great build 
online. His blog is uh, is pretty popular, and uh, you know certainly one of the people that has taught me uh, a lot of what I know um, in the uh, in the shoe uh, collecting game. So anyway, this is Wisconsin Shoe Guy. That's a pair of butterfly loafers from J Fitzpatrick Footwear, and I am out. Thank you for watching.